Nathan, you've been involved in the uh, debates and the ongoing um, controversies and desire to eliminate controversies uh, between evolution and religion. Uh, what, what's the current uh, status of the world from your uh, highly biased perspective? <laughs> well, um, I th I'm, I'm hopeful for the first time in a while because I think that um, evolutionary science has you know, been defending itself um, against uh, you know, attacks from more fundamentalist type of religion. Um, but there have been some big breakthroughs in our understanding, both of genetics, which has helped, um, but also in religion's approach to its own texts. And I think um, that you know, religion is a collection of very, very dearly held beliefs. Um, and that are also connected to human solidarity. And so religion is important to people. And I think um, a lot of scientists, and especially in the skeptical and atheist community, um, you know, really want to just do away with religion if they had their way. Um, but what that misses, I think, is the fact that, that religion is a source of social cohesion. It, it creates solidarity. It also creates a sense of meaning. And we are evolved to seek meaning and purpose and solidarity. So we're evolved to be religious. We're not evolved for any specific religion, of course, but to have you know, creation stories, origin stories um, that, make, that help people make sense of their place. Mm. That's important. And so what I t would try to do, what I have tried to do, is work with religious communities to help them understand the science and so that they can find how it's compatible with their religion. And I found that it, you know, when you sit down um, and really explain um, the basics of evolutionary science, um, that th there really isn't anything inherently incompatible with that with most religious beliefs. A unless you're going to be really strict about a belief about the age of the earth or the universe. Um, most of the other disputes you can break through. Um, and I think actually um, solid science, you know, explained with empathy, uh, you know, rather than with insults, um, you know, helps people see. And, mm -hmm. and so, so you, uh, as someone who's not a believer, mm -hmm. work with uh, those who are believers to help them in this process. Um, and others who are not believers might be very militant and think that you're either wasting your time or uh, kind of uh, a traitor to the honest truth. Uh, 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 do you feel like you're patronizing the people that you're talking to because you think they're clearly wrong in their belief uh, or else you would believe it? Um, well, I don't really think of it as a matter of right and wrong. I think that religious belief um, isn't... Um, so you don't think you're right and they're wrong, you think that's just your opinion? Uh, I don't even think it's opinion. I think it's the way that you frame uh, your place in the world. And I don't think there's a wrong answer to that. Um, I think uh, your understanding of your place in the world, of what your purpose is in life, is an organizing principle, right? <laughs> so is it right or wrong to organize your papers in folders versus file cabinets? Do, versus do, you, do you really think that the uh, religious belief is the equivalent of which file you put your paper in? I think it can be, yeah. I think, I think where it gets wrong is when it makes truth claims that, that can be verified. You know, so when a religion steps out and says, no, the world is right. 8,000 years old, well, they've stepped out of their lane. <laughs> but if they say that you have a relationship with the creator and that creator wants you to thrive, I believe the same thing. I just think that I'm, you know, that, that my creator might be different than your creator. Um, and I think that where people find meaning in religion um, and also connects them to other people in their community, that has value. And I, I can't say that it's wrong. Some of their truth claims they might say are wrong. Um, but understanding those truth claims as, as an organizing principle rather than as um, you know, a, a declarative statement that can be verified. It's not hypothesis testing we're talking about here. Um, you know, what's the lessons that you read? And a lot of religions, the oldest religions, have evolved with their times. And if you, the Dalai Lama talks about this all the time. If, 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 if Buddhism uh, believes something and science you know, says it has to be different, he says, well, then Buddhism has to change. It has to evolve like any other social structure. And seeing it that way, rather than as rights and wrongs, um, I think brings us together. And that's how I can sit at the table with religious believers who, who, who might believe you know, some things that I think are, are untrue, um, but, the, but what they're doing in, in their religion and how it's organizing them, I think is good and, and can be good. Let me frame uh, a, 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 a spectrum of different ways that re uh, evolution can engage with uh, at least uh, Abrahamic religions. So mm -hmm. uh, on one extreme, you'd have creation science, which would have a young earth theory, whether it's 8,000 or 6,000 mm -hmm. years, a very mm -hmm. young earth and interpreted there. Mm -hmm. Moving uh, 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 onward, uh, you would have what has been called intelligent design, which mm -hmm. may 
may allow a very old uh, um, deep time, mm -hmm. uh, but it has uh, evolution faults uh, because there is a supernatural creation of different elements there, mm -hmm. that there's a irreducible complexity, as mm -hmm. they might like to say, mm -hmm. right? Then moving on, you would have something that we might call theistic evolution, in which all the principles of evolution are correct, uh, but that at the joints or the nodes in the selection process, that there were supernatural interventions by a creator. So mm -hmm. that might be the third kind. And then the fourth kind would be more of a deistic evolution, mm -hmm. where the, the creator uh, set the laws of, of uh, the universe in motion in some brilliant way mm -hmm. and then would could step back and just watch the process develop without any intervention mm -hmm. and lead to the objective purpose. Right. I think those are four that may be, I'm sure, lots of sub-variants mm -hmm. there. If you go to the next stage, then you have no creator at all. Mm -hmm. So of, of those four areas, is that, is that a fair characterization of the field? How, how, how would yeah. you interact with it? Yeah, there's a big spectrum, and I think you've, you've identified some major posts in that spectrum uh, that people line up behind. Um, and um, obviously, the, the closer you get towards an unguided evolutionary process, the more it's in line with the evidence, because uh, that's what we see. It does seem to be fairly unguided. Yeah, but, but um, the last one would be unguided, but it's set up in advance, but with a trophism mm -hmm. to reach some objective. Okay, like a perfect pool shot, <laughs> yeah. right, where it all ends up in the yeah, right place. Right, right. Um, so that's, that gets to be a little hard to disprove. And, and, and what, the reason I say that is it sort of takes it outside of the realm of science, which in a sense resolves the conflict. <laughs> so the more that, that uh, the religious truth claims uh, become untestable, the more compatible with science they become, <laughs> ironically. Um, but that's sort of my point, is that it does start to be sort of separate realms. And um, I know that that's, that's a, an analogy that's been used before, but the, the way I see it is that um, you know, religion, um, you know, has to be nudged back into its lane sometimes when it comes to scientific truth claims. And I think, and that's what I do, it's part of what I do is to, to make sure that we defend that border mm -hmm. um, because there's important implications to, to this, to the, the getting the science right. Um, but at the same time, when, when scientists, um, you know, see, see no value of religion or see only the negative um, aspects of religion, they also are denying something that's pretty inherent in human nature. Uh, and that is the, the s pattern recognition, which became looking for purpose and meaning, and also solidarity. And it, when those are compatible with science, I think is when we are at our best.